Well, committee, I just would say that I scheduled markup for this this morning, but I uh, thought that we would have information from the administration agencies on enhanced designations and critical resource areas. That's what I asked them to talk about this week, but we didn't get that. So I don't really think we have much to do with Ellen. Oh, okay. I'm sorry to no, tell you that sorry. now. Um, and I would suggest that we pivot to, um, unless folks have comments they want to make on that, um, we can hear those and then suggest we pivot to talking about water quality ideas and, and taxes you'd be willing to pay um, for water quality funding. So that's, that's how I'm feeling this morning. So I don't think we have a lot to work on. We, we, need, we have work to do to get more input on definitions, which is where I thought, we, I thought we'd have that, so. Yes. Um, you know, repetition, repetition, repetition. But I will say again today, I was disappointed in the testimony we got from the administration um, on the topic. Um, I didn't think it was instructive uh, regarding um, actually Act 250 the next 50 years. It, it was just not useful for furthering our discussion about how we need to move forward. And, and uh, I, I appreciate the shift today because we do have a need for more. All right. Thanks for coming in. Oh, well, thank you for we'll having me. Again soon. <laughs> okay. Great. Bye. 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 We'll write a couple bills. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to for the next two hours. Yeah. <laughs> so yesterday we uh, got an overview of some water quality funding ideas. Um, Carrie has a few more. And I think we had already adjourned, but uh, the folks who were still in the room um, as we were moving, as we were breaking up, I said, well, you know, nobody wants to raise money for water quality funding. Um, none of us want to pay another tax, but I guess the challenge I put before us is to say, what tax would you be willing to pay to clean up the state of uh, the state's waters? Um, because we need to, we need to do this. We've, we've got an imperative from um, the EPA with a deadline of July 1, and um, our committee has an opportunity to shape that conversation, and we should take that opportunity by putting some stuff out there that we want to hear more about. And so what I'd like to hear from you all are, are tax ideas for, or, or fund, funding ideas for water quality cleanup that you find palatable and worthy of our exploration. Hmm. Hmm. Could we get a copy of the uh, list that... Uh the, uh, it was drafted by uh, George Till. Representative Till? Huh? Till? Beth yes. Pierce. Um, well, we have the bill. But we no, I, I'm, I'm talking Beth about. Beth Pierce. Huh? Beth Pierce. Yeah, Beth Pierce. Oh. Uh, that would be good because, I mean, she had just about everything in there that you could think of. Yep, we can get that. In fact, um, Laura can probably just find it. It's the Treasurer's Report on Water Quality Financing, I think it's called. And. Um, it's from two years ago, Beth Pierce's office. And if, um, I'm sure you'll find it. But if you don't, let us know. We could even have it, I'm sure you could email it to us quickly right now. Um, yeah. so, so I guess I, I would comment on, on the various, uh, the various mechanisms that are in H-171. Um, we, we got testimony um, four years ago um, from the tax department back when the idea was $10 per parcel as a flat fee. And so when one looks at the, um, looks at uh, the, the, the section um, that proposes buckets or barrels or $10 per year, 
the tax the, the tax department said like four years ago that the cost of collecting ten dollars um, wiped out the ten dollars. In fact, I, it, my memory is that that it um, costs money to collect ten dollars, and so uh, I'm just questioning on a broad sense, and, we, and and I don't know if we would need testimony on that or if our committee is really going to only be talking about the 10,000 foot level. Yeah, we like this concept and send it to Ways and Means, but I would comment that that the that those buckets are all all off. Uh, they're all too low, um, and and um, for sub four on page four, line seven. Uh, that needs to be tiered. Um, just one bucket for greater than 10,000 square feet, that needs to have a sub-tier uh, so that maybe on a per 10,000 square foot basis uh, there is a fee. Um, and maybe I stop on this topic. Yeah, I almost want to, um, I wonder about there's five things in Georgia's bill. Are any of them or on the table or off the table in terms right. of people's levels of interest? Right <clears throat> if you have a I'll just say one thing I was thinking about in terms of evaluating is who pays. And so that is a question I asked myself in evaluating each of those things. <clears throat> Because you know, like the the asphalt tax, um, even though it starts way back at the beginning of the process, it's going to be passed right along to you know the uh, transportation department to you know the towns, municipalities because they're going to use that product that's going to be built in, so they're paying the tax. So, it, and almost everything else, the the milk one. Uh, consumers would be, you know, paying that in the end. Mm -hmm. and uh, just, just about every tax there is out there uh, is going to be put on the shoulders of uh, the consuming public. Representative Morgan and then Delon. I pretty much agree with him. Anything that makes the cost of owning a home or the cost of consuming food things that are necessary for people, I would be against. Things that you have a choice in, whether you want to buy it or not, and most people probably would anyway, that would be something that I would be for. But to make it more expensive to live here and make a house more expensive than it already needs to be due to all kinds of rules, regulations, etc., I'm against. Um, I just want to just mention that uh, if we do nothing, the cost is still there. It's still going to be paid for by municipalities, residents, taxpayers. Oh, no, I can't, I can't go with that. Yeah, um, but that's the reality. If you're going to improve wastewater treatment, that costs repairs. If, if you improve your road network, that's going to cost municipalities. If you're trying to help agriculture, those dollars have to, they're leveraging federal, but usually state dollars to level federal. So if we do nothing on funding, the costs don't go away. And so I think the challenge for us is to, to determine how to make sure that any dollar invested is strategic, you're getting the best bang for the buck, so you're not wasting any dollars. And number two, we're trying to minimize those costs across the rate taxpayers. I just want to mention that it's um, the costs don't go away just because we decide not to fund it. It means the whole burden is going to be on, you know, paid for by each of those sectors. Representative Squirrel. Yeah, and I want to follow up on that. I, I would I would posit that the costs go up. Uh, if we fail to find a clean water funding source that makes sense here, because the EPA and jurisdiction under the Federal Clean Water Act is point source pollution. 
and we're just not going to get the kind of results we need for the cost involved. It so I support it increases that cost. It increases it at least three times because if EPA ends up only relying on wastewater treatment upgrades, farmer more farmer regulations under APO, which is the combined animal feedlot <coughs> requirement under the Clean Water Act, and um, federal stormwater regulations, those things increase the cost three times, and you don't get the results. And, and my second part is that I think we need to keep the proposal and to be on our radar. Keep it, okay. So there's a, a chip on the table that, that Representative Squirrels just put out. Who else is in favor of continuing to look at the impervious fee? I'm not. So. I think we have to look at it, you know, especially getting out the question of um, what is the cost of administrating that? Um, but I think there's other wait, options. So too. wait, let me just do a quick count. Uh, Who's in favor of just keeping it on the list to look at it as an option? Uh, this <coughs> this well, is a tax on impervious surfaces, surfaces, not the not the proposal. Correct. That's on the know. surfaces yeah. that run off. Yeah. Does that include houses? Yes. yes. Anything that's that a purpose purpose? person made. <laughs> yes. Uh, or yes. or compacted by people. I guess I'm gonna keep that on the list. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I I agree with both Tom and Lee and Chris. I mean we have to think about how to do this affordably in an affordable way. And so I think that's going to be a real need for us to, to wrestle with, is how to spread those costs so that's minimized or pick the right fund resources. We learned there's no free lunch in anything. It's got to come from somewhere. How do we, how do, we do that in a thoughtful way? Representative Odie and Emma Fave. Well, I, when I said, you know, I want to think about who's paying, there is the argument that you made, which is, um, I think, that um, if it's attached to impervious surfaces, then it increases the cost to own things that people already own and that, um, you know, it's shelter for people. So, um, one thing that people have a choice about, if we go with this, your art, um, what I think I heard you saying, is um, if you if you go with a higher amount on a room that people rent, um, a hotel or motel or Airbnb, whatever, that is uh, discretionary and. Um, and most of that is not paid by the monitors. And I'm not sure that it would dissuade someone from coming to Vermont to pay something on the room that they rent because if you ever go to another state, they have rental car taxes and they have all kinds of things on their on their hotel rooms. And so to me that's um, if it's not too high, that would answer those two concerns that you raised. As long as it's not so high as to negatively impact what we do to, you know, the tourists that bring millions upon millions upon millions of dollars to our state. So um, I, I'm, I'm open to listening to a lot of things. Um, and not necessarily taking things off the table at this point, but um, but I would be open to having it be more than one dollar on a room. Yeah. Representative Lafave, uh, you know I would like to reiterate what Representative McCullough said in the terms of it's not basically the sources we go after, but it also is how we collect the money in terms of who we can get the most efficiency. And, and, and that said, I mean, this committee for the last 
four years anyway that I've been on, has always come up with a funding package only to see it be dismissed or we've lost in the ways and means or it just hasn't gone anywhere. And I, and I, and I, and so I think in terms of trying to come up with uh, a way of, 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 of getting funding for water, um, you should, you know, I, I, I think we should look at a number of options that haven't been tried, and one of them, in my mind, is in a, more or less would be an assessment that would be based on income tax, so that you know it would it would be scaled to uh, uh, income, and it would be so much uh, a flat fee for just for an example, say for anyone with an income between uh, you know, uh, what the bot, what the very whatever the minimum is you pay a tax on. Up to another bracket, you would give ten dollars, then the next bracket would go up. You get it would, it would increase by increment. I don't know what the increments are. I don't know where the cutoffs are, but I would like to get someone in here who could kind of you know point that out to me, and then have uh, a figure out basically what that would bring in, and then maybe pick a couple of the small ones. I think the one we've got on the uh, tax on the, uh, the the property transfer tax has worked very well. We've done it two years now, and it's going to do the whole shoot and mash, but I don't. I don't mind that as an option, and, uh, and, and you know I'm more than willing to look at the fossil, though I understand some irregularity as far as the mapping goes, uh, with uh, you know shade trees and things like that. Uh, and just the technology isn't quite up to snuff yet. But, um, Representative Bates and then Morgan. I'm going to hit a ball in the right field. What about a trout stamp? In the Illinois, they generated tons and tons and tons of money to fish on Lake Michigan for trout. <clears throat> and people just <clears throat> buy them, they collect them, they do all these things similar to our duck stamps and to our uh, yeah, state stamp. Too. And um, our state stamp. So, you know, you could set a price, three bucks, four bucks, five bucks, whatever. People, anybody in the outdoors, I can say is for myself is that I would absolutely <clears throat> spend the money on a stamp. Just to know that it's going toward clean water for trout. You sell it on the trout thing. So I don't, you know, a lot of states have that, and I don't think we don't have that here. And it's an easier way, I think, when you're in the outdoors, they will spend money. They will spend money for their boats and their fishing rods, and they'll, they'll do it. And I think it's a great idea that, you know, and it's not offensive, people say, oh, well, cool, you know. Like the bears, you know, the early bear tag, there was some, some, uh, the resistance to that, but after they realized, wow, what a great deal this is, Extra five they all jumped on it. Then Morgan and then Odie. I had a couple of suggestions, very simplistic. I live on the shores of the Lamoille River, and there are, I see lots of motorized boats come up and down at various sizes on two boats. I'll have a registration on them to <coughs> pay money to use the water to help with various things. I also see, and I have several myself, canoes, kayaks, uh, blow up boats, things that are not registered, that are not motorized. They're all using the waterways by great numbers, in great numbers, and we don't, they, they don't contribute, contribute in any way, tax-wise. Why not consider having those things registered also? So these these two ideas that you guys have just floated are often floated to help make up the gap in fish and wildlife's budget related to the, the decrease in license sales. And I would say that we were on the agenda for this biennium anyway is a conversation about that. And there's various reasons those, uh, and I don't actually remember them, and it doesn't matter for this conversation, but they've, we, they've proven to be challenges. It's been killed in the past. I know. Well, it, yeah. Not liked by anyone. I, I don't know. I don't know why, but I'm, I'm glad you're. I like where your heads are. Carol's up next, but um, I have some more. Ideas. Okay, we'll go ahead. Um, in the state of Vermont, very simplistic, and I've always thought about this. Everybody, well, many people have pets, from cats to snakes. The only animal that has to pay a fee is a dog, and that usually goes to the towns, but that could be changed. Why not? require a licensing, as dogs are, to all pets. Cats, horses, snake, I, I guess a caged bird probably could be exempt, but why not expend that, uh, extend that type of tax? Um, 
why shouldn't a cat be? Uh, I know in some places, in New York, there are some places where towns require cats to be licensed. And that would generate a, quite a lot of money here, I think. Um, beverages. Why not with alcoholic and soda type be beverages that we don't, aren't required, we don't need, they're not necessary, but everybody buys them, and it seems they buy them at, uh, in the same with uh, 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 cigarettes and e-cigarettes and pretty soon marijuana. Why don't we put a tax on that? Just as an example, you're going to buy some liquor, how about one cent per ounce of every liquor, that, any liquor that you buy? Uh, that, that in itself, and a, and a person purchases purchasing that, they're not going to be one concerned about paying <coughs> a few extra cents for a six-pack of beer based on ounces. And it would generate tons of money, I believe. And the same with soda. I mean, we'd now put an extra tax on top of soda, another cent. Stuff, I see these things beside the road by the millions. So, so they don't even turn in for the five cents, so they're not going to be concerned about paying another penny per ounce or whatever deemed necessary. And the same with tobacco and e-cigarettes. Tobacco, one of the worst things in the world, and we sell it here in the state. Add up another buck to the pack of cigarettes. People are still going to buy them, and it would create a tremendous amount of money. Um, another, another thing related to uh, the outdoors, we, have, uh, we could have another type of number plate, which could be designated as a water cleanup number plate with a certain designation on it that we have. Um, these, these people are, that have them are saying, yes, I want cleanup and I'm willing to pay an extra X amount of dollars for my plate um, to, go to, to, to go to that. And I like the idea of the, uh, the hotel motel thing, people coming into town paying, paying a little extra money. Let's see if there's anything else that uh, uh, interesting. No, I guess that's about it. But I, those are quite simple, I think. I don't think they would, I think it would be an, a, a, rather, a rather easy thing to do, and I think most people would, would support it because it's not going to add to their, uh, the cost of living because these things, uh, you know, if Coca-Cola gets too expensive, people can live without it. They don't need to buy it. The same with the booze. That, and if they don't want to have to pay to have, keep a cat, well, they can can their cat. <laughs> Literally or figuratively. <laughs> <cat. laughs> That's a nice feel. Thank you. Oh, I just wanted to know about the stamps. It's not a postage stamp, it's a stamp that, what do you do with it? So, so in Illinois, we would buy them and you would attach them to your fishing license so that when you're out fishing, if you got stopped, you would, the DNR officer would say, oh, okay, you have your trout stamp, you can fish for trout. And it's just specifically for trout. So it's required. You got a license and a stamp? You, you don't have, if you're not fishing for trout, you didn't need to buy one. But people buy them anyway for collecting. I think I paid 12 bucks for it. And part of it went to Lake Michigan. Part of it went to the DNR. Part of it, you know, they broke it up so that the money went to different places out of the 10 bucks or 13 bucks. But um, you don't need to buy one. But for this purpose, you would need one because trout is our fish. Are there people all over the country who buy and sell stamps from other states? They do. Oh. They do. They, they collect them, they trade them, they sell them. Minnesota has it. Was the, most of the Midwest states have that stamp. Hmm. Representative Lefebvre and then Tara I, I don't have it. Oh, okay. Representative Tara Uh Chris, that's a pretty good idea. The only problem is the uh, state's shutting down the hatchery in Salisbury. So in a few years, I don't know how many uh, trout we're going to have in the state. You know? Well, we don't know. Yeah. Representative Dolan. Um, these are great ideas. Uh, I'm also um, stuck on that concept of um, the non-motorized craft, whether it's a kayak, a raft, a tube, a stand-up board. <laughs> I don't know about an inner tube, but anything yeah. that, think, that could be paddled and, and, right. and moved by. Um, and I, I say that kind of funny, but yeah. um, but oh my gosh, I mean those people want to be paddling on clean water, on clean rivers, and and um, are out there appreciating it. I wonder if 
and you see this with with mountain bikes up in the Northeast Kingdom they buy a, a day pass or if you go cross-country skiing you buy a, a pass or skiing now, I wonder to what extent that's a really interesting question because I, I bet you have a very um, open audience an audience who would probably be a little bit more receptive because they are in fact enjoying the same outdoors as everybody else. Representative McCullough and then Morgan. I, I, I really like the brainstorming we're doing here and um, and if you've been around this building long enough you'll know that every <coughs> single one of these things has shot up like a shooting star and flamed right out. <laughs> and, and, um, but maybe but, the time but, is right. Well, <laughs> maybe the time is right. <laughs> and just because things I did in the past personally didn't work doesn't mean I'm not interested in trying them again because times are different. I, I, I only add that to suggest that we have a bill in front of us which has specifics that we need to move out of here. And, and I think the intent is we give it a 10,000 foot level on the types that are in here. And that the Ways and Means Committee is then going to do the deeper dig and, and decide, you know, is $10 for the first bucket enough or should it be 20, for instance? That really isn't, I don't, I, 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 I come to understand, not what we probably should be doing. Having said that, I think an appendix that we could attach to this bill for the Ways and Means consideration could very well be a compendium of um, all of all of our joint ideas. We might also just put an asterisk there that says, see, See Treasurer Pierce's report, yes, that's and, what I'm looking and and um, which of course they've seen, and and um, but not all the members there have seen it because there's some members there. So so I think maybe we could include an additional section with our brainstorming ideas for them to consider. Um, but we really do, I think, need to on a on a section by section here. Um, at the 10,000 foot level say, yeah, let's, we support a further conversation on this one, we support a further con conversation on that one, and you know, we're not so hot on this other one. Uh, Representative Morgan and then Dolan. I, I just wanted to say, I, I just, I don't feel that I can support anything that's going to make the cost of necessary living, housing. Uh, I just can't support. Um, well, again, I want to kind of build on what what Lee had um, suggested. I have a, um, as you know, I put in a, another straw proposal that we can think about and it be ready next week. But it was the, along those same lines of looking at beverages. And if we put um, 10 cents on, on bottled water and 15 cents on sugared drinks, only taking five cents of the 15 for sugar drinks, using the rest for other health related, whether you're fighting obesity or diabetes or something, um, having those two. And if, and if people are concerned about access to water for drinking, there's always tap water, you know, and, um, which is, uh, I think, uh, an important, we're lucky to have high quality tap water in the state. Um, so I. Those two excise taxes, I think, and, and according to the Treasury's report, generate um, a, a substantial amount of funding. We'll find out from Michael Grady next week how much. But um, that may be something to either supplement this with another funding source if, if we want to use at least this bill as what we give back to ways and means or, um, or look at it as a standalone with something, some of these other ideas. Um, I, I throw that out because I think that was the one of the principal ideas. The other thing I added to it, which we can, I, I know Paul had mentioned that that was one of those ideas that shot up and then shot down. <laughs> but the idea of everyone gets a haircut, hair uses a lot of water and chemicals, <laughs> and everyone would be, 
contributing to that, but a small, you know, a, a removal of a of the um, exemption, and um, that generates, according to the treasurer's report, about three to four million. Um, just as again, just putting out these proposals as straw proposals for us to, and if if we're struggling with the per parcel or impervious cover, there may be these alternative things we can live with. You know, it's it's um, shares it between visitors and us alike. It shares um, it spreads the costs. It generates revenue. It, there's a nexus to clean water. <coughs> One thing as we toss these ideas around, we need to think of it, uh, the policy ramifications of what we're choosing, as that's kind of our role in this. And so when I mentioned that, you know, our Fish and Wildlife Department, which is under our jurisdiction, is struggling to, to raise funds, I would caution us around things that we want to keep on the table for them. Um, not necessarily going like robbing Peter to pay Paul here might not be the what we want to do. Um, not to say that the, maybe the nexus with water and trout is strong and we shouldn't put it out there, but when we send our opinions over to Ways and Means, we got to understand how they affect other parts of what we need to take care of here. Representative Odie. In that case, uh, the 15 cents you were talking about, the first 10 cents could go to Fish and Wildlife and the other nickel could go to. Yeah, I was trying to recognize the public health Diabetes and exercise, you know, we're trying to get it. But the well, ducks. We have the excise tax on sugar yeah. sweet beverages. So. But the duck stamp, the registration on non vehicle, and um, one of the other ideas would be ideal because we don't want to close that fishery, <laughs> that fish hatchery. I think that's a done deal at the cost of keeping it open. That's another conversation. But um, OK, well, this has been helpful. I think um, Laura may, did find the treasurer's report. She's put it up on our web page. Um, it is full of lots of ideas. Uh, Representative Odie and then Morgan. The one thing I wanted to say about the impervious surface fee is that it's if you if you're in a forest and there's no and there's and you could own thousands upon thousands of acres and you might not have any impervious surface, so you wouldn't pay it. Great, you don't pay it. It's a clear access. Actually, they would have impervious surface there. Their logging, logging roads, roads their access roads, 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 roads they would all, right. all be impervious. If they had logging roads, it would. Uh, it, it's a clear nexus. I I, I appreciate that that you know the amount of of impervious surface you have on your property is affects water quality. The um, mm -hmm. um, the interesting thing when you no know, in prior years when they were talking about impervious cover, they were looking at bigger bins, you know, bigger costs. I think fifty dollars is the first bin, and then it goes up to two hundred, and then five hundred, and so having a this is reasonable. Very, very you can specific. have one structure. But how you use the structures equally is, if not more important, yeah. than um, if, if depending on what your target revenues are. And depending on the cost of administering it, once you do it, if you've decided it's worth doing, you've paid the cost of administering it, those are modest fees. You double it, you, you practically reach our goal. Yeah. And it's done. It's one, one source. And, um, so we, I, I think what I'm hearing is, <clears throat> We'll hear from some of the folks on that about the ability and the cost of doing it. And um, sounds like there's a, an interest among people on the occupancy fee. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't know guys. if I'm really excited about that occupancy fee. I've I've heard it from my um, constituents in my district. That's one area. They're already at nine percent which is higher than sales tax at 6%. And even though it's a per night thing, it's still it's an additional tax. So um, especially, I like the idea of at least going after the, you know, Airbnb, we have an agreement. All the other DBOs or whatever the other short-term rentals are yet to face some equal taxing compared to our 
um, hotels and motels. So I, I'm a little he hesitant of putting additional tax on something that's already highly taxed. Represent the four guides and then we'll cover the. the uh, <clears throat> is it me? Yes. Yeah. The 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 dollar dollar per night. I haven't. I've only been here five years, but every year something has come up on that. Last year it was going to be used to help pay for the housing bond. Right. Uh, a year before that it was going to be uh, something for homeless, I think. Um, ironically, down in my area, the biggest, the biggest critic of a one dollar night per tax on housing was Woodstock Inn. Yeah. Now, one dollar per night at Woodstock Inn is not going to keep a single person from staying at Woodstock Inn. <laughs> and, and if any of us are off on some other state and you're staying overnight, how many look to see if there's an extra one dollar per night that they're paying? Nobody does. If you want to stay there, you stay there. You know, how much, how much that would generate, I don't know. Uh, it could be, uh, it would seem to me the collection of it could be handled with the rooms and meals tax, yep. which I think we were talking about doing before. <coughs> um, the number they gave us was 3.4 million. Yeah. On that one. And uh, to me, that's, that's something that you're, you're, the only way you're hurting Vermonters with that tax is if you're staying in a, in a hotel, motel in Vermont. Um, otherwise, that money's going to come out of state. Was there some, I can't, oh, McCullough. Yeah, yeah sorry. Well, you can acknowledge both of these conversations, and both of these conversations have happened um, in at least three biennia, and they're still good conversations. Uh, I've had, I, I think I had a bill for five dollars a night. Um, I've seen ten dollars a night on the table as well. Um, it, it, it comes down to should it be con in, in this bill? Should the concept be considered by ways and means? And uh, for them to select a number. Um, I'll, I'll say that my memory is the state chamber was against it and the Lake Champlain Regional Chamber was for it. I think you're right. And so, um, and, 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 and build on what um, Lee said, it's other people's money. It doesn't come out of mom and pop's grocery bill. Um, it's totally discretionary. Um, if you don't want to come to the UVM graduation because you got to pay an extra five dollars a night in Burlington, stay home. Really? I don't think it's going to keep them away, and I don't think they'll stay in Manchester and drive up to save five bucks. So, uh, I mean, in New Hampshire. So then, is it a concept that ways and means? that we would recommend as a policy decision um, that doesn't rob from our Department of Fish and Wildlife, um, could add to the water quality um, funding uh, source, and in fact could keep the impervious, help keep the impervious surface fee a little lower for the average Vermonter because of the infusion of other money from away. Um, so, as a policy decision, I support keeping that in. Yeah, the um, per parcel fee, um, as you indicated earlier, <coughs> because the amount would be harder to collect, would, would be more expensive to collect, except that they're asking the town to do it, so so there's going to be no expense as far as the state is concerned on collecting that fee. You're talking about impervious fee? Or no, I'm parcel? talking about the per parcel okay. fee. Yeah. The, the impervious surface fee, I don't know how you're going to collect that. Well, that's, uh, well, what? Uh, uh, years ago, we had what was a $5 poll tax, 
and I'm not I'm not saying do that. I'm just using that as an example that it got to the point where it was costing more to collect it than it was to do it, and it, it was probably unconstitutional. And it was done away with. Were you, this is in your lifetime. We had a poll tax. Yes. Oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah. It was pretty common. Oh, yeah. 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 We had a poll tax. Mm -hmm. Depending on what you had, at the your listers house. had to come out and uh, yeah. list yeah. all the uh, all the critters you had on the. Yeah. Market. Right. Right. Yeah. Dogs, cats, whatever. Yeah. Yep. The whole the whole nine yards. Yeah. Yeah. As a dog most, person, I'm on board with other either let the dogs be unlicensed <laughs> or. Licensed everyone else's animals. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, the poll tax was a pretty big deal, and I remember when yeah. they did it. Actually, it just keeps you from poll tax, you didn't yeah. say. Yeah, right, right. No, that, no, was, right. that was the kind of Mr. Homer. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. It wasn't, that it wasn't yeah. having to do with voting? They couldn't buy from voting. Oh. No, it was on all the farm so was, animals. I don't know what else it was yeah. on. Yeah. It was on farm, so it wasn't really a poll tax. Was yeah. it related to voting or no? They called it a poll tax, it was a poll and tax. it was. Uh, on uh, the farm animals, and but it was uh, revenue that the state used to pay the agricultural, you know, the research uh, centers and the extension. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. but, but a portion of it went to the town so that everybody was paying mm -hmm. tax. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so it was before property tax? Maybe? Mm. Oh, we had a no, property tax, tax too. With it. Yeah. This was a property tax. I mean, it was all our property. They yeah. were taxing. Yeah. We right. just called the old <laughs> We used it. our poll tax. They also added in certain machinery that you had. Yeah, and a certain was, type of so equipment. Well, we just got rid of that. We got rid of all of them. Yeah. yeah. What I wanted to say was uh, this thing about pets. Certainly farm animals, unless you've got a goat, you call it your pet goat, you know, those types of things. And I, and I guess, you know, chickens, people have pet chickens, but they utilize the, the eggs, et cetera. So those things are pets. I mean, things that are pets that are just, in essence, worthless, we just love them. You know, those are pets. So should we tax our children? <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure that <laughs> I'm not getting that one. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that's <laughs> <called. laughs> I, I would just like to point out in the treasurer's report, it, it did say that the easiest tax to collect and the one that would bring in 16.7 mil was the flat fee parcel, $50. Um, I mean, I, I really do think it's really a question of how much money we, we have to spend on the collection of them. And the difficulty. I mean, the town clerks were, you know, we had crashed around with them in terms of going to go through the pocket. They didn't want to do it. So, with the, any, either the parcel or the impervious, being a town with a lot of tax exempt properties, I can just already hear my town clerk. I don't know how you add hundreds. We would have hundreds of parcels to add in Middlebury um, if we decided to. I'm not saying we shouldn't do it, but I don't, I think the logistics of some of our towns with so much tax free property. Would be a big challenge if they really don't get a bill at all. I, mm. I think they. I want to check on that one. They must get something. A, a zero. I don't know. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say that um, what I heard uh, Ledge Council saying is that there would be three expenses. One would be to change the way the bill, the property tax bill, looks. Mm -hmm. So you have to add a line. Mm -hmm. One would be to, to add all the previously tax exempt properties so that you have that all added. So, you know, to be fair to the towns, that would be nice if we gave them some money and didn't have an unfunded mandate to do that. And then there was one other expense. Oh, collecting it if you if it weren't paid. But yeah. <clears throat> I remember that when we were talking last time, it was a concern that, I don't know, I, heard was if we put it on the property tax bill it looks like property tax and people complain very much about property taxes so but if you separated it off the property tax bill then the cost to administer that program would be millions of dollars every year and what are you going to do if somebody doesn't pay ten dollars or fifty dollars to, to go after that it's just cost prohibitive so if you have it the way it's proposed in this bill then you then it's once you get it going, it's pretty streamlined, and the money definitely comes in. So, yeah, that's the, the positive about that. Representative Morgan. In the, in the state of Vermont, we have a number of state parks. Do people have to pay to go into a state park? Yeah, and the, 
Forest Parks and Rec essentially pays for themselves through those fees. It's pretty. So it's there. There is something already set up, a whole program. Yes, yeah. and they're going to come in next week on the fee bill and asking for very modest increases. And that might be something to consider, asking for an increase <coughs> with whatever their modest increase might be to uh, <coughs> and have those funds divert cooking <coughs> water. But a lot of these parks have water. People are using it. They probably would not be too upset about paying an extra, I don't know, 25, whatever, whatever some sort of a, an extra fee. And it could be indicated right on a, right on a stub that they paid that much more to have our water clean. Represent a Sorry for talking too much, but the other thing I want to say is, you know, if you, I'm thinking, <coughs> if you raise taxes in just a couple of places, one or two places, it, with the per parcel that you said was how much was it? <coughs> sixteen point five. Sixteen point five, and then you do five dollars on a hotel room, which is eighteen million. You've got a lot of money without having to. Be rich. Not that it's necessarily what we should do, I'm just saying, then you've got a lot of funds to do a lot of work, and it's permanent, and it goes into the future, 20 years, and after the initial shock of absorbing that idea, you don't see taxes in lots of other places. So, you know, you don't want to also be known as a place where every single thing you do is taxed. Yeah. So sometimes just paying one little thing, one thing, substantial, insubstantial, depends, you know, <coughs> one thing that you pay, or two things, generating revenue and then everything else is left alone might be less stressful to people than all of a sudden all kinds of taxes going on <coughs> and feeling like you're taxed. That's just a, it's an observation. It's not anything else. So we've um, looked at three of the five things in George's bill, and though we talked briefly about the asphalt, essentially, you know, kind of being passed on to all of us. And to, in some ways, to me, the impervious fee and the asphalt fee are maybe too much the same coin. You know, I mean, I wonder about. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the asphalt uh, dollar per ton that he's proposed, and I think he. I, we don't know how much it would raise, but I think it was only a million dollars. <clears throat> Representative Odie. Well, I'm one, when I hear about this, I'm wondering about the use of glass in roads. You know, we, we have a problem right. with glass because we don't know what to do with it. <clears throat> when you go to the solid waste district, they, they're like, glass is an issue. It would be great to have people have to use it. So maybe it would encourage people to use glass in roads. And the other thing, what else? The other I would thing encourage I would say, people to use glass in well, roads. Instead of asphalt, less asphalt. Instead of having oh, sand, oh, yeah. less money. But it would still be a ton of asphalt. It would just have glass on it. It's, it's All right. Well, well there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then so the other thing I say, it might encourage people to instead of putting a driveway in that's paved, <coughs> they would put a driveway in that's not paved and choose some imper some pervious surface yeah. instead. Now I don't know how much the people would be impacted by that. You know, still well, they, do, choice. And they do make them. I, I saw uh, some of the watershed uh, discussions we were having. They put in uh, a driveway with like paving blocks yeah. so if there's uh, space in between them or you know they're setting away so there's a little hole in between them so it allows it to get out. But usually they have to put a sub base under there and the sub base would be probably impervious. I mean it may or may not be. Because uh, if they're going to let the water run down through it, they have to do something different. But if you put in a foot or two of, of some kind of uh, fill, it's going to be pretty hard for that water to run through it, unless it's pretty coarse. Representative Morgan. I know that they, I've seen those, uh, they're kind of innovative. It's almost like a septic system. They put a crushed stone base underneath so the water can go down through the top of the driveway into that and then slowly absorb into the interior. Rather, very expensive. Just a comment. Representative McCall. I like the idea of of the asphalt um, tax. 
um, in, in that it may dissuade uh, excessive use of asphalt. Um, it may dissuade um, people from even using asphalt um, in certain instances. And, and um, we have two major asphalt manufacturers that sell in Vermont. Um, they're both located in New Hampshire. Um, and having said that, that doesn't mean it's going to be free money because that price will get passed on to the Vermont Department of the Vermont Agency of Transportation and uh, everybody who paves their driveway or their tennis court. Um, but I think it bears being looked at and, and, and for the um, for the value of its green nature for <laughs> nothing else. Um, so I would support keeping keeping that in. Um, I would hope that when they when when the Ways and Means considers that, they'd consider other impervious makers as well. So all the, the sub the sub base that goes under all the asphalt is all non-renewable resource as well. Crushed, crushed stone, sand, um, concrete, Portland cement. Um, that those are all similar kinds of impervious surfaces that are part of the problem. We need impervious surfaces to drive to work. <laughs> but um, so I think those, I, I wouldn't want to strike it because I'm kind of looking at this bill as a package. You want to keep this area down. You add a few of these other things in, and 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 so from a policy standpoint for clean water, I think we know the petroleum that's in the asphalt that does leach out into our ditches and then streams and 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 um, lakes uh, is an issue, and so then it could be reasonably. Um, taxed as part of the problem for cleanup. So I would support keeping it in. Representative Dillon. Um, it doesn't really describe if there are any exemptions to this impervious surface fee, but the, I guess the question is how does it apply <coughs> to roads or state roads? It does have exemptions for municipal roads. Okay, so properties. municipal roads, yeah, so mm -hmm. I imagine municipal roads and state roads, it does <coughs> capture you know, you've heard me as a broken record complain about private roads and driveways, right. but, but it would exempt municipal roads and, and state yeah. highways. So in that respect, that asphalt fee is, I think, a good reflection just to indicate that that's a, just another hard surface and maybe a nominal fee to illustrate an all-in contribution to this. Bill. How much does it raise again? A million, according to um, George Till's bill, or his, his bill. Yeah. So it's not a lot, but it's, it's a contribution. <laughs> One million less to raise elsewhere. Representative <laughs> <laughs> Odie? I was thinking about unintended consequences, and we're worried about lots being split up. Mm -hmm. And if we had a per parcel fee, mm -hmm. then, then maybe it'd be less likely for forests to be split into smaller parcels because it would be, you know, more expensive to pay for. Or people might consolidate their parcels. Yeah, yeah and it might be just the opposite. Uh, a lot of these parcels, forest blocks, they're made up of a lot of parcels. They're not just one parcel. Right. They, they, they look one. like yeah. one parcel, yeah. but they purchase them over a period of time, and they all still have a separate parcel, the same with the agriculture community. So, but it might motivate them to make it into one. Well, they may not be able to. I mean, uh, they may, for whatever reason. But, anyways, uh, you know, it just—it's uh, not as simple as. Yeah. So what I'd like to hear you say more about that because that's important. Yeah. Well, you know, with, with the agriculture community, uh, um, a lot of the larger farms when we did the water quality bill, we said, okay, for water quality purposes, you need to pay five thousand dollars annually to open your door keep your door open. The medium-sized farm, it was $2,500. So they've already contributed quite a lot that way. And then you do a per parcel fee, 
and depending on how these parcels are broken up and we really ought to take some time and understand what it would be before we we move forward with it um, so there are some consequences to that and the impervious surface fee we've asked the agriculture community to put in a lot of impervious surface to catch the dirty water and retain all the runoffs and make sure the livestock are in an area that is, uh, you know, helps keep the water clean. And then, you know, depending on what the rate would be, then you go back and put an additional tax on that for them to utilize it. So, I mean, there's consequences all the way around. Then, then I would. So, yeah, go ahead, Representative. I was going to say that. Oh, sorry. Uh, point of interest this bill exempts state municipal um, stormwater issues from the transportation infrastructure. The town of Williston's um, um, stormwater utility and the town of South Burlington's does not, and the state <coughs> contributes their fair share to the open pervious surface and this could be a step a huge step backwards but again that's the details that that committee would be dealing with and and, and i don't think detracts really from the concept should impervious surface be in here and so i again urge that the policy matter we include that in the impervious surface and have them because they will anyway deal with the details and and just we did digress a little to a parcel but this bill doesn't have a parcel fee in it, it has no purpose it's it. so impervious. good to remember that representative body but could we include a note that would that would or in an appendix or something mm -hmm. that would say caution unintended consequences and then say you know if it's about impervious surface fee if you've been legally required to put something in i don't know you could just, a lot of people are required to put in parking in a city, so that would exempt that if you said that's exempt. Or, but you might say, you might point out just about farms that they've been required to put something in. <coughs> you might not want to then tax them on the thing that they've been required to put in. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, I'm just going to try to capture that. Um, if you, if you think about it in terms of the city, people you know, say, okay, you have to have a certain number of parking lots, parking spaces. So now you have a building that wants to be built in the city, and they've been required to put a certain number of parking lots, spaces, then you want to exempt that. So that's, we're getting a little into the weeds on that. Um, yes, thank you. Um, the last one, which we haven't touched yet, is Mill Candler's. <coughs> point zero zero one cent on a I remember the I can't remember the unit. Hundred per pound. Per pound. Per pound. Per pound. Uh, yeah, yeah, ten cents yeah. a hundred weight. About underweight. Ten pounds an hour. Uh, yeah, ten pounds is an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, yeah let's tax those no, uh, uh, farmers. Yeah. They're making so much money on their uh, right. The dividend, the dividend. Well, actually, Let's try to that wouldn't to go to the farmer, that would go to the handler, so it would go to the okay. consumer. But here's the question on that. Um, would that create an incentive for the handlers, the, the process, to leave the state and go elsewhere? Yeah. Well, that, that's, a, that's a possibility. There's a lot so of other reasons that um, the processes are uh, really looking hard at whether they should stay in Vermont or not. So that's Because I would rather thing. keep the processing. I, I like the idea of consumers paying, and they did, I think uh, Michael Grady did mention that Maine has this, but I don't want to lose the, the, the processing. Well, you know, I, I'm going to agree uh, with Representative Morgan in the fact that uh, we need to be careful about adding the cost of living on a home and putting food on your table. And uh, I know it's a minuscule <coughs> fee, but I got to tell you that it's not going to come back at 0.001 to the consumer. It's going to be substantially higher than that. 
because there's going to be some administrative costs in there. There's going to be an opportunity for them to make a little money with that, and I've seen it happen in the past. So it's uh, and that's going to be passed on to the consumer. And I think it was um, a small revenue. Like I think he said it was one point six. Oh. Yeah, no, I, I realize it. It's small. I just. Uh, I, I just don't like the idea of going down the road and taxing our food. And that's basically what it does. And if I may, you know, it's something I point I made yesterday. A well-managed farm and forest is our goal, and, and I know there. Um, I think the intent was to try to have every sector contribute, but um, I, I too share that concern putting an added burden on the agricultural industry. I would just like to add, if we're going to impose taxes, which nobody's happy with that, let's let's impose a tax that's not essential to life. Uh, for instance, this, not milk, not somebody's driveway. Something that you could you can tax, but people can, <clears throat> for those who can't afford it, don't have to pay a tax. And there are lots of people that are willing to, wouldn't even notice the difference when they buy soda or go to a motel. Representative McCullough. So, um, under the impervious surface fee, we're not exempting, proposing to exempt agriculture we're not the poet um, and it's you know been pointed out agriculture is doing um, those who are taking good care of their um, concentrated feed lots and and their their um, silage leachate and so on impervious areas they are putting effort into that uh, this bill doesn't recognize that effort it says you've got impervious surface on this farm, you're gonna to have to contribute to the bucket. Okay, and I'm okay with that. Having said that, um, the, the nexus for, for milk producers, not producers, milk food processors, which is, I think, poorly defined in this bill, but that's a different story. Um, I think the nexus is not nearly as clear, and um, it's not um, it's not generating a lot of money. But it could be, uh, but it could be if we had our floor ears on, to uh, quote a uh, former chair, it could put a stake in the heart of the bill. We, we're, we're suddenly going to be what? Raising more taxes on the backs of, of, of milk? And so I, I think it's a bad policy for us to promote um, on this committee. Um, and, and, uh, simply because it's not a really tight nexus and because, because um, it's not going to further our ability have legislation that will produce results. I, I, I say no to this one. Okay. So, Representative Bates. So I'm in the food business, obviously, with my hot sauce and stuff. So I can't. Tax hot sauce. <laughs> I cannot support the milk thing either. I just, I, I just can't because it's going to come down the line. So if somebody was to charge me fifty dollar permit, it could end up being three more dollars added on to my bottle of hot sauce just because I can do it. So I just, I, I'm, I'm out. Okay, so looks like we're open <clears throat> for the five. Um, and Carrie's gonna bring a few more next week. And there are straw proposals, just something um, to put on the table to get your reactions. What did you say, straw? Straw. Hey. Thanks, strong. Good idea. Uh, paper. <laughs> proposals. <laughs> um, well, actually, that's going to be such a lucrative business that you could put a 
pretty high tax on that. Everybody still make money. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, oh, yeah. Well, for about a day until everybody starts <laughs> going out. What about Paul's uh, suggestion earlier <clears throat> having to do with income tax? That's a great question. How do people feel about that? That's something that can raise a lot more money to worry than anything else we're talking about. But the, what's the proposal? It would be scaled to the income, so that it would be an assessment, and the assessment would be scaled to income as reported on your income tax, and would go in. the increments would be figured in increments, and the more money you made, the higher, the higher assessment you would pay. It's maybe starting at ten and working its way up. You need some kind of expertise testimony to say how that would all play out, or how much we could, depending on how much we wanted to take from it, but. It could be one of the uh, one of the options, or it could be, you know, a big a, a big option. I I don't know, but it just seems like it would be easy to collect. That's all. And I'm, I'm going to remember that things we ran into before. We all ran into difficulties with collection and what that was going to cost. And a lot of a lot of our options got scuttled because the uh, the, the collection fee was too high. So, and looking at that, it's just. The simplest and most direct way to try to put a bunch of money in a in a bucket. So when we tell people that their state income tax is going to be higher, I, I don't I don't think people would be very receptive. To that. Even though it might be only an insignificant amount to most of us, still people think, oh my goodness, our taxes are going up again, and I don't, I don't think people would be too receptive. To but, but it may be um, a better option than putting it on the property tax. Absolutely. Even though yeah, the property tax, that, that's where the treasurer's found a nexus because your water's running off property and bringing pollutants with it. And I think that's why they don't talk, they talk about impervious or parcel versus income. So it's a farther nexus to water, but it may be a much better alternative since the property tax for education is already income sensitive, yet it still is on the property tax. So, and since we haven't moved any of those education funds off the property tax to become more income based, even though 75% of the education funds is income sensitive. This may be the second best alternative. I, I, I personally agree in terms of affordability that property tax, the only thing that tool that one of the only, one of two tools that municipalities have, and, and they're struggling. Um, and so this may be a more politically palatable option in lieu of a property-based. Do we have a bottom line? Is it still 25 million? That's the number I use in my mind. Yeah. I know that was true two years ago, and I knew there was a lot of discussion as to whether or not that was even going to cut it. That I remember mis um, people from municipalities coming in and saying, you know, by the time you get the, uh, the O&M uh, price figure in, it's going to be around 32. 30 to 32, as I recall. Yeah, no. And so to me, it's, you know, we're just kind of taking what we hope is in the cheapest way out, but I don't know if it's going to do the job. And, and that is... And we still haven't um, gotten there. Yeah, we haven't gotten there. It's kind of, we're going to have to do it. But. I think better do it once and not then keep on putting it up. And I think the 30 to 32 is what I can remember. And that's, that represents the state subsidy. Portion, the state subsidy of the cost. Yeah. It's not the full cost. No. <coughs> all right. Well, this was really great. Thank you all for um, pivoting to a new topic and um, providing ideas.